Hi, I'm Brent Zarnick. I'm uh, uh, teaching at Johns Hopkins right now uh, with Space Force PME, Professional Military Education. And that's where I uh, do a lot of this space stuff. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is my bottom line up front for all you military folk. Uh, basically what I'm gonna try to tell or try to convince you of in the next 10 or 15 minutes is that the way most people think about deterrence in space based on nuclear uh, deterrence theory is very likely both wrong and dangerous. Uh, and why do I think that? Because space power theory, which is primarily what I study, uh, tends to suggest that there's a different model than nuclear warfare and maybe even land warfare that space warfare will eventually emerge, you know, uh, emerge into that is whose attempts at deterrence will probably be diametrically opposed to uh, to the standards that we usually have on nuclear deterrence theory now. Instead of being very highly escalatory, very dangerous, it's space warfare is probably more dynamic and focuses on limited war uh, as, a, uh, as its nature, uh, rather than something much more dangerous like nuclear warfare. But uh, next slide. Basically the way that nuclear warfare started to tie to space warfare was in the Cold War. Uh, and we call it the Sanctuary School of Space uh, that existed during this time and still does exist. But the Sanctuary School of Space essentially said that Warfare in space, attacking satellites primarily, would be extremely escalatory and dangerous to the level of perhaps even nuclear warfare. And they tried to tie deterrence understandings for nuclear warfare to space warfare. And the reason they did so is because at the time of the Cold War, most space systems supported the nuclear deterrent strategic efforts of both the Soviet Union and the United States. So if you were going to say first strike a satellite, uh, be it a, a spy satellite or a communication satellite, more than likely that was going to significantly hamper or destroy uh, one nation's ability to see a nuclear attack coming or command and control their nuclear forces under attack. And both would be the prelude to nuclear war. So with this paradigm in the Cold War, space warfare was considered essentially unthinkable. Uh, next slide. But then, as you all probably know, in the 90s and coming up through today, we stopped seeing space systems used primarily for strategic nuclear deterrence and more and more used for more or less uh, tactical or operational conventional warfare. Space is a war fighting domain. And that's significant because nowadays it's not simply as a prelude to nuclear war that someone might actually think of attacking a space system uh, for strategic advantage. Uh, back in the 80s, if you took out an NRO satellite, it was probably going to be because the Soviet Union didn't want to see the first strike coming, or at least that was a high probability of that being the case. Nowadays, uh, space systems are routinely um, attacked, for lack of a better word, in order to hamper uh, their capabilities on the ground for tactical operations. Uh, we saw it in the, in the Gulf War to a limited extent. We even see it in the Ukraine conflict right now. Uh, the paradigm for space activity, military activity in space is fundamentally different. Next slide. But the thinking behind the sanctuary school remains in, uh, in thinking and doctrine and policy and strategy, even at the highest levels of government. And I'm sorry that this is sort of an eye chart, but this is from the National Defense Strategy from a little, uh, a couple of years back, where they're trying to say that a wide range of fast evolving technologies are complicating escalation dynamics, which I'm sure you know is very much tied to nuclear uh, uh, deterrence, uh, you know, and creating new challenges for strategic stability. These include the counter space weapons, hypersonic weapons, a whole bunch of different things. And they say that especially in the cyber and dom uh, I'm sorry, the cyber and space domains, the risk of inadvertent escalation is high due to unclear norms of behavior, uh, complex domain interactions and escalation thresholds. I would tend to agree with that. But when you see what people are talking about space 
uh, in the space domain in terms of, de uh, of deterrence, you start to see where we might become our own problem. Uh, this, again, in the National Defense Strategy, it says the department will employ integrated deterrence approach that draws on tailored combinations of conventional cyber space and information capabilities together with the unique deterrent effect of nuclear weapons. Again, you see that tie between uh, space and cyber, although I am not a cyber person by any stretch of the imagination, and nuclear weapons. There's that connection there. And it seems, it, I would argue that because of these interactions, you have a general understanding that if a space attack happens or an attack happens in the space domain, it is inherently escalatory. You also hear this with the idea that space is an offensively dominant domain uh, among war, uh, you know, war fighters. Um, but then this last uh, thing here that I've got in 2010, you know, the director of space policy and strategy development at the DOD said, credible ability to carry out retaliation, you know, in the space domain need not and should not be limited to military actions in the space domain. So this is where the idea of uh, we will uh, retaliate for a space attack in a time, place, and domain of our choosing comes from, which maybe you've heard, but uh, or maybe you haven't, but I certainly have. 